out. Mm-hmm. Pac-12 is out. Mm-hmm. How are we having any kind of a college football season, whether it's the SEC or the ACC? Money. And do you? Well, it is money. Yeah, the answer is money. It's DRV right. said before, right? The answer is money. Always. Money. always are the root of this. Yeah. <laughs> always. Yeah. Right. But I guess my question then is how can um, – and I guess we could also throw the Big 12 into this too, right? How can – the presidents of these universities, the athletic directors of these schools, mm-hmm. they've been very silent. We haven't heard anything from them. I haven't right. heard anything from my school, University of Pittsburgh. You haven't heard anything from Syracuse. We, we've heard nothing. Yeah. Um, I mean, uh, Syrac- Syracuse's AD, I think, spoke out like a couple oh, of Oh, did he? Ago. Okay. Yeah, because um, they were saying something about like non-conference um, games or something to that extent. And um, he said that non-conference opponents have to go through certain protocol before they can play and compete against like our athletes. So I don't even know what the extent of the regimen is. I think I wrote about this maybe like a month ago um, at this point. But as it pertains to the regimen and the the expectations of the NCAA has 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 put out there i think even Syracuse pointed to this they're only testing players three times a week and i still think that that is not enough um like especially when you think about the fact that the vi- like you can literally be carrying the virus for up to 14 days before you test positive like that in and of itself doesn't make sense to me of why there's not testing at any given point like over a 48 hour period they could interact with 10 people and then have a positive case and then what happens like i I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I, th- I, I think it's unbelievable the SEC has been and ACC and Big 12 have been this quiet. Yeah. Now we saw Oklahoma. Brian, you saw this too. What They had nine yeah. players uh, test positive, and, t- and they seem to be trying to kind of sweep this under the rug as if it's, oh, this is just nothing that happened. Well, and yeah. you have other schools, and you have other schools telling players that, "Yo, don't report your sy- symptoms. Like, we just want you out here playing. We don't care." You know what I mean? Like, we have that going on as well, and it's like I think. I think at the very least, teams should be just delaying the season until the spring because maybe you will have football in the spring. Yeah, Yeah, I mean, so I I wrote something yesterday about the spring season. I was sort of like just fishing around, like asking agents, like NFL agents, like how this would impact them, like leading into the draft. And like agents would just were not fond of a spring season. They were just saying, you know, like this is just not a good idea. Um, One of them said that like it would just be better off if players like that either – are intending on going to the draft, but they might have like another year of like eligibility. Like somehow like they should put this off until next fall. And if they have to leave now and they have to enter the draft, just go straight into the draft. Like um, one of the um, agents that I spoke to, he said that like your draft stock might drop, but Hmm. if you're predicted to get drafted, just go ahead and declare for the draft. Like don't participate in a spring season. Um, And so I thought that that was interesting too. I don't even know if we're even going to have like the the anticipation is that we would have a vaccine by the spring. I don't know if that's even going to happen. So I think like there's also sort of uncertainty on that front of like, well, if it does come to February and there's still no concrete vaccine that's out there that could actually prevent the vi or prevent you from um, catching the virus because 50 percent, um, I guess, like shieldability. I, like, I don't understand, like, the purpose in getting that vaccine because that's currently what's being tested here in the U.S. So um, I think personally that um, we're just going to have to see. <laughs> yeah, so. It, Pretty much. What, it, what's, what, what's been in your reporting, what's been the anecdote that has surprised you the most in covering all of this? The thing that you've heard that you were like, wait, 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 what? Like. Um, I think first, I guess, like, I could just go back to, like, the story, like, that I even, like, reported on yesterday. I think, like, first, like, I was just, like, confused, like, when the agent first told me, like, no, like, a spring season is just a bad idea. I was just, like, could you explain, like, why? And then, like, he, like, ran down, like, what exactly happens, like, during that spring time period, whether it's, you know, like, the the pro days are usually February and March. And then it's, like, so that's when a season is. And then when you start going through it, the combine is late March. And then when you start like moving through things, it's like, oh, and the draft is in April. So it's like all of that, like that timetable of a season on like layered on top of what already is happening during that time period. I think it's just very absurd um, just to say, oh, we're just going to slab a season on top of that. Like, I don't know how that's even feasible. So I don't know how any of this is feasible right now, (laughs) to be totally honest. I don't know how I don't know how. I don't know how life is feasible at this point right now. <laughs> so, DRB, 
Um, mm-hmm. There's the other side of things. If, if you know, just to be fair, there's the folks that say we need college football, right? Really there are college towns, really small don't. college towns, where a lot of the econ- economy in those towns are dependent upon the schools that are there, right? And right. and sometimes those college football programs. So those people say we need college football back now. It has to happen. What would you say to that? Um, I would just tell those people like please just do a little Google search to see what are the side effects and or residual effects of catching COVID. Because I don't think people really know. Like, they've taken what Trump has said as it pertains to younger people and actually, like, taken it at face value. And it's like, yes, younger people are surviving COVID, but they don't even know what their quality of life is even going to look like in a month, two months, three months. So I just think that like all of this, a lot of it has to do with the fact that maybe like a lot of like the, I guess, cable news that people are watching, like it's not as much of an emphasis on what's been happening to individuals once they've catch COVID. A, A lot of these people are avid Um, cable news watchers and that's not like personally just watching like that's not what's being talked about Um, but just simple google search of like what these side effects are would actually help inform people's opinions on this virus a little better it's not the flu you're not gonna have a heart condition if you catch the flu Um, so it's just like simple things like that where like you're not gonna have lung damage if you catch the flu like like these are simple things where it's like when people tell you this is like the flu, you can just say, I don't know about that because this is not something that you would get as a residual effect of catching the flu. Like, yeah. So it's amazing. We still have to even explain that to people at this point. Like right. I, I, I find it absolutely amazing. <laughs> A couple more things. What did you make of the players sort of uniting together? Cause I was kind of encouraged mm-hmm. about that at the beginning, especially what we saw out of the PAC 12. 